Welcome in to Raymond James Stadium to kick off this Saturday of round two college football action. When this day is all said and done, we will know who our elite eight teams are. We're getting ready for a battle between a couple of 20 seeds. The West Virginia Mountaineers of the Big East and the Florida State Seminoles of the ACC. Both teams pulling off some massive upsets in the first round. For that team, Florida State perhaps the most shocking as all of all, taking down Boise State. But more shocking than that, they only allowed them to score two points. Their defense held them to zero offensive points and only gave up a safety. Absolutely amazing against one of the highest scoring teams in the nation in Boise State. I think people are still shocked over that one. For West Virginia, their defense helped them out in a big way too. When they uh, had the ball on offense, or I should say when they played Wisconsin, they gave up in the first two minutes of the game a kickoff return for a touchdown and two interceptions for a touchdown. They found themselves down by 21 points. And thanks to the defense though of the West Virginia Mountaineers, they were able to hold a high-powered Wisconsin offense led by Russell Wilson and Monty Ball to zero offensive points in the game. And behind the power of Geno Smith, he was able to lead his team on a 24-point comeback. And this includes a defensive interception late in the game for the Mountaineers over the Badgers to help seal that win. And now both these teams find themselves here. These two Cinderella stories find themselves at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. And the winner will go on to the Orange Bowl to do battle with another juggernaut. They've already taken down a juggernaut once, and they'll have the chance to do it again as they'll have to take on the Alabama Crimson Tide in the Orange Bowl. And Alabama's already had their part in taking down the ACC champions. And they did that last night in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. So we are underway in West Virginia. Geno Smith, I believe that the winner of this game will be dictated by how well Geno Smith plays. And his offense can certainly help him out as the running backs just continue to tr move down the field and pick up yards. Already a first down. And Geno Smith was really the one that helped fight West Virginia back into that game with Wisconsin. And I truly believe he will be the one that dictates winner or loser in this battle of Cinderella teams. Geno Smith will throw for the first time. He'll go with the screen pass. And that'll be close to a first down. Able to get it out to running back Dustin Garrison. Third and five for the Mountaineers. Smith going deep. Has an open man and he throws the interception. Florida State defense coming up big. Once again, Smith having single coverage down the field. And Mike Harris, the senior from Miami with the pick. Florida State, although they don't have the advantage in ticket sales, they are close to home. and They did have to travel, though, a little longer. They had to go from Florida all the way to Vegas, all the way back to Florida for this game. Florida State attempting the same play. They threw it into double coverage, and it was going to go incomplete. It was in the hands of the receiver. They just could not hang on to it. Into the hands of Burt Reed, and he got hit, and down he went. Takes us to his second and ten. E.J. Manuel, the quarterback, batted away, incomplete in West Virginia defense. And that's what I'm looking forward to is both of these teams, plenty powerful defenses as neither one of them allowed their opponents to score a single point offensively. West Virginia gave up 21, but that was all special teams and defense. That'll be a first down for Florida State. And FSU gave up two points, but that was via safety. Defensively, not a single offensive point scored by Wisconsin 
and scored by Boise State. When you say those two names and say that neither of them scored an offensive point, especially in bowl season, that just tells you how well these defenses were prepared. Manuel wanting to go deep again, nearly intercepted. Both of these quarterbacks laying out on these opening drives. And it hasn't worked out for him yet. Defensive coordinator, West Virginia, Jeff Castile, and for the Seminoles, you got Mark Stoops. Both of them can be proud of what they did. There's Freeman, who had a nice day against Boise State. It's third down and five. Manuel, flushed out of the pocket, throws it up into triple coverage, incomplete in the Mountaineers. A round of applause for themselves. They will get the football back. Raymond James Stadium. And speaking of Cinderella teams and upsets last year's Outback Bowl between Miami, Ohio and South Carolina. And Miami, Ohio pulled off the upset win. Both of these are two Cinderellas playing each other. So you can't really say it will be an upset win either way. First down throw, Geno Smith. West Virginia coming into this one with three losses. Florida State with four. West Virginia, though, they are the co-Big East champions. Smith, incomplete. The other co-Big East champion, the Cincinnati Bearcats, they'll be in action later today, and they pulled off their own Cinderella win when they took down the Arkansas Razorbacks in double overtime. What a game that was. If you haven't seen it yet, you need to go see it because that game was the game of the playoffs thus far. Florida State defense holding tough and now they'll have to give it up. Another opportunity, and as, as advertised, the defense is coming up. There's Freeman on the carry, and he'll get enough for a yard, and that is it. Second down and nine now for the Seminoles, and a lot of quarterbacks, they've been taking shots down the field early. You gotta like that. Manuel looks like he wants to go deep again. No, he's gonna run it. EJ Manuel for a first down. Down to the 37-yard line. Took his time. And that's what West Virginia probably thought. They all went deep. Thinking, oh, he's going deep again. But Manuel, he tucked it and ran. So it'll be first down for Florida State. And indeed at the 37-yard line. Just... Under two minutes to play in the first quarter. We've yet to see a score. Freeman with the handoff. And a seven-yard run for Devonta Freeman. He looks frustrated with himself. I'd be happy with a seven-yard run. But maybe he felt he could have broke that one for more. No, it's not Freeman. That's uh, the fullback. Is that 39 I saw? 35? 38, 38, got it on the third try. That's number 38, of course, and uh, that is Jermaine Thomas, the backup running back. He's from Jacksonville, so just about a four-hour drive from Tampa to Jacksonville. And they got him in while Freeman is taking a rest. Manuel hits his man over the middle for 10 yards. That was Burt Reed from Panama City, the other a senior, a very senior-led Florida State team, which might be the reason why they're stepping up so big in the clutch here.
First down, Seminoles. When you look at the Seminoles, you think of four losses. Two of those losses may be questionable in a five-point loss to Wake Forest and a one-point loss to Virginia. But other than that, the two losses were to the ACC champs and Oklahoma. And that's two very decent losses to have. Freeman will take it for another Florida State first down. And the Seminoles are looking to put their first offensive points on the board against this West Virginia defense. And two defenses that haven't allowed offensive points in a week. So a defensive war of attrition right now. The Seminoles are winning. Thomas with that run on the, on the ground. Manuel will throw it, looking for six, and he'll put it through the uprights for three. But that's not going to work here. Second and ten. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want it to work. He wants that touchdown instead. He wants those points. Manuel to take off, and they're not going to let him run that time. He gets pancaked by a D lineman on West Virginia. It was uh it was number ninety one. We all know him. That is J B Layman. Or it could be the other number ninety one, Arthur Johannes. Either one. Johannes, whichever. That's the end of the first quarter here in Tampa at the Outback Bowl. We're all knotted up 0-0 zero zero, as advertised. Two teams that didn't allow an offensive point in their two opening round games. And Manuel almost gets interception. Garvin probably should have had that pick. Terrence Garvin. The field goal attempt for S FSU, and they'll settle for three. Dustin Hopkins puts it in. And for the first time, one of these two defenses gives up points offensively. It's 3-0, to zero, Florida State. And as I said in the pregame, I believe winner or loser of this game will truly be dictated by how Geno Smith plays because he played so well after being down by 21 points to Wisconsin. And if he has a rough day, there's no way West Virginia wins. But if he comes to the table strong, I think West Virginia might pull off the victory and move on to do battle with the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Quickly find themselves at a second down and four at the 35-yard line. Smith out of the pistol. Goes over the middle. Open receiver to Florida State Territory down to the other 45-yard line. Geno Smith starting to get in rhythm now. It took him a while in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, but now he's rolling. An incomplete pass thrown there, but he's starting to roll now. Las Vegas Bowl and Little Caesars Pizza Bowl champions duking it out here in the Outback. I might want to go for some Outback after this game. I'm starting to get hungry. It's, on, it's around lunchtime. Geno Smith is going to fumble it. Oh, Florida State football. Big blunder after a great run by Geno Smith. Oh, it just got ripped. It was ripped out of there by Vince Williams, the linebacker. And Florida State has the opportunity to do some more damage. But again, West Virginia gave up 14 points on two turnovers and 7 points on a kick return for a touchdown. And they ended up alright. As long as their defense keeps playing like that. Manuel was brought down on the sack by Josh Francis.
second and 15. They allow Freeman to run it. Third and four. Right at the 50, right on that Outback Bowl logo. I hope you can find the hash marks. They let Manuel throw it on third and four to the far side. Had an open man and just missed him incomplete. On fourth down, the West Virginia defense will hold. I'm impressed with these defenses. Stepping up strong here in the Bowl Championship Series. And the football looked like it was going to stop at the one. But it hit the end zone. And Powell's probably wondering, where was my defense to get down there? Or my special teams to get down there and make the stop? They could have easily gotten the stop. Put it down at the one. Now you let Geno Smith throw it with five wide. And his wide receiver will drop it. Smith's trying his hardest out there. And... He's going to need a little bit of help offensively. There's some help. First down, West Virginia. Good open field catch. They're at the three-minute mark and continue to run the up-tempo, no-huddle offense. Smith works out of the pistol again. Inside handoff, the draw play for three yards to the running back, Dustin Garrison. Second down and seven. They got four guys in the back. Check this formation out. They screen it out. That didn't work out at all. Screenplay was thrown to Tyler Urban. Third and seven for West Virginia. To Garrison. First down, Garrison. On the inside handoff, Dustin Garrison picks up the first for West Virginia, and they get to start all over. New set of downs. Fake it to Garrison. Geno Smith looking for it. Oh, yes! Completion to the 25-yard line. Geno Smith able to get that one out to Tavin Austin, the junior. And the Mountaineers are in business, and Geno Smith starting to get in rhythm. Fake it to Garrison. Connects with Tyler Urban. And now they're going to take a deep breath and reset. Screams it out to Garrison, and that's all he'll get is that three yards. Under two minutes to play, and West Virginia doesn't want to tie it. They want to take the lead. Smith on third and seven. Open receiver. Touchdown, West Virginia Mountaineers. What a drive by Geno Smith and company. And Ivan McCarty, the sophomore, will cap the drive off. That is McCarty's first touchdown since October 1st. He scored three in the first five weeks of the season. And since then, nothing. And... Looking at some of the scores, West Virginia, I mean, their defense has played well all season with the exception of 47 and 49 points they gave up to Syracuse and LSU, respectively. I mean, they've given up 13, 12 points on defense, 10 points on defense, 16 on defense. So, very good defenses here for the Mountaineers. EJ Manuel will take off, and he'll slide down just as the linebacker launched at him. And in turn, the linebacker went sailing across the field. So now it's up to Manuel on the Florida State Seminoles to answer back. That's going to be a fumble. West Virginia picks it up. They are looking towards the end zone. Knocked out of bounds by Manuel at the 20-yard line. 
Oh, what a turn of momentum we have right now. Darwin Cook was the one that picked the fumble up. And it was forced out of there on the monster hit by Francis. And the rest was Darwin Cook as he scooped it up. Was looking for the end zone, but he got pushed out by Manuel. And the Mountaineers are in business of pulling off another comeback. They were down 3 nothing, And here they go. Halfback slip screen out to Garrison. Did not work. Well defended. Second down and 10. To Garrison on the ground. And not a bad carry. He'll get four. Get a hard-nosed run. Third and six. Look for Geno Smith to hit the middle of the field again. On a passing play, looking for a touchdown. Look at the middle of the field. He's going there. I called it. Middle of the field, first down for West Virginia. The Mountaineers are in business, and Geno Smith, they're going to let Garrison take it. Not a bad decision, but can't do much with it. Has an open man incomplete. They do not want to stall out Smith. They can sense the end zone. It's right there. It says West Virginia in big yellow letters. Garrison gets held. Goal line stand for Florida State. In on the tackle was big number 91, Cornelius Carandine. And West Virginia will go for the field goal. Tyler Bittenkurt, and we have a flag. Ed Hockley. False start against the Mountaineers. And that makes this field goal attempt now at 25 yarder. Just a, just a touch harder, but not too bad. It's still good. West Virginia will... Increase their lead to seven here at Raymond James Stadium. All of these second round games have been really good coming down to the wire with some really close matchups. And it looks like today is going to be no different. This Saturday, this college football Saturday between Florida State and West Virginia. Two 20 seeded teams. Trying to make a run at a national title and a win here lands them a short trip down south to Miami to deal with the Alabama Crimson Tide, who already took down the best in the ACC and the best in the MAC. They took down two conference champions. That's a pretty good feat for a team that's not even champions of anything, not even of their own division. End of the first half. It's been fun. Florida State 3, West Virginia 10. The winner goes to the Orange Bowl. Who wants it more? This is the Bowl Championship Series playoffs. The ESPN on ABC will be right back. Welcome back to Raymond James Stadium. It's the Outback Bowl. And game tracks will get you all caught up. Here we go. Plenty of defense early on, but late in the game. And actually, you got to credit defense. For both scores on the game, because Florida State off of a fumble recovery from Geno Smith would go to get three points. And then for West Virginia, a fumble recovery would lead to their extra three points. And here's where we are. Freeman 
on the handoff, two yards. Freeman takes it again. He's able to get some more. Six yards? Yes. Five yards. Man, my math was a little off. So third down and three. They're in the eye. Maybe giving it to Freeman again. They pitch it to the outside to Freeman as Virginia had the line stacked and the defense forced a fumble again, but Florida State able to come up with it. Like we said, both defenses have been playing amazingly. We've seen interceptions. We've seen fumbles. Again, this is two defensive teams that didn't allow a point in the first round offensively. And their opening round opponents, Boise State and Wisconsin, to shut those two teams out offensively, you're doing something right on defense. Gina Smith lost that pass into an incompletion. So they'll reset at second and ten. Down at the 26, Smith to throw it again. Incomplete. And they're trying to, Smith was in all kinds of rhythm at the end of the first half. And Dana Hogel, Horgel, <laughs> Hogelson letting uh, Gina Smith just go wild right now here in the second half. 50% on third down conversion. So now they decide to take it away from Gina Smith. They run it to Garrison. He'll get eight, nearly gets the first down. But that's all he'll get. Look at this stadium in Tampa. Sold out with West Virginia and Florida State fans. A lot of the fans couldn't make the trip to the opening round games for these teams. For West Virginia, they were up in Detroit. And for Florida State, they were up in Las Vegas. So when both of these teams pulled off the upset wins and knew they were coming back to Tampa, these fans, they made the trip. They raced out here. Freeman. And right now, Florida State, they're just trying to run the ball. Get some things going. Second down and eight. Pressure out to Freeman. Freeman, they throw it to him that time and... He'll get five to take us to a third down and three. And this is where they were stopped last time. Almost the same exact play calls to get him to the same exact spot they were. One series ago, and again, it doesn't work. They go to the outside again. And you see the pirate ship in the background. Just Burt Reed on the carry, and he got one and nothing more, and another defensive stop for West Virginia. The punt will be brought to the 21 yard line, and we'll see what the Mountaineers can do here. Roderick Jenkins, that's a great name. Smith fakes it, Smith fakes the run and throws it. Oh my goodness. Like a Houdini on that play. Oh, handoff to Garrison. Garrison breaking through for the first down up to midfield. Look at that center. He doesn't even have his hand on the football. There he go. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Speaking of Houdinis. I think we might need to check that center for something. I mean, he, he like, he had his hand there and the ball just, I don't know, that was weird. That was weird. I don't want to see that again. Second and ten, Geno Smith to throw. Geno Smith towards the end zone, incomplete. More great defense stepping up for both of these squads. Third down and ten for the Mountaineers. Inside handoff, Garrison, nothing. 
and West Virginia to punt it away. This is where this is where you get on the edge of your seat because you're just waiting for one of these offenses to break through here in the second half, and it hasn't happened yet. And you're just you're anxiously waiting. This is where football gets exciting. Not when teams are putting up hundreds of points, but when you got two defenses stepping up and you're waiting for that one big offensive play that breaks your game wide open. They're content to let Freeman run it. And the Mountaineers, they're just ripping away at the football. With everything they have, just yanking and pulling. Second down and 11. They'll get some of that yardage back. Thanks to the completed catch by the tight end, Bu Relliford. Third and three. Screen pass incomplete. Oh, man. He tried to run before he, catch, he caught it. And you see the end result, a punt on fourth down. Those are the plays that hurt, because if he did catch that, there was nothing but green grass and a big blue end zone ahead of him. And he saw that, and he dropped it before he caught it. And that gives Geno Smith a new opportunity. Smith. Screens it out to his wide receiver for four. Up to the 42-yard line. Hand off to Garrison for three yards. And third and three. And keep your eye on maybe some kind of option play, Geno Smith run, or what have you on third down and short. Nope. Whoa, oh, they're going to get the first down anyway, though. What a blunder for Everett Dawkins. For a defense that's been playing so well, come up with a bonehead play like that to give West Virginia a new set of downs. All you had to do was tackle the guy. Open receiver, touchdown West Virginia, and you see, do you see now what that blunder did for your team? Ivan McCarty, touchdown number five on the year for him, and touchdown number two in this game. He's well on his way to being player of the game, and the Mountaineers, it looks like that they might have a date with the Alabama Crimson Tide in Miami. It'll be a short trip for them from Tampa down to Miami. And for Florida State, or for Boise State sitting at home watching this thing, they're wondering why the heck couldn't we score 17 points on this defense. West Virginia defense has allowed three points in seven quarters of action. I cannot wait to see what this defense does against an Alabama offense that scored 30-plus points against Clemson. But don't go away yet because we've seen some comebacks happen. We saw Arkansas score 21 in the fourth quarter to come back against Cincinnati. It's only a 10-point game. No, 14-point game. Let me get my math right. 14-point game here in Tampa. Two touchdowns. Don't go away. Plenty of time. It has been 17 unanswered, though, for West Virginia. Devonta Freeman takes us to a third down and two, and this is where the Seminoles have had trouble converting is on these third downs. Fake it to Freeman, and again, down goes Manuel. He just ran right into a Mountaineer. 
Darwin Cook, the man who picked up the fumble earlier, and again on third down. That's something I'm going to look at when we get into our postgame show. Third down efficiency. It's been a mess for Florida State. And Geno Smith, Garrison and company, Mr. Garrison, they have the opportunity on this drive to start thinking about the Orange Bowl if they can score a touchdown. 21 points in the fourth quarter. Let's see. Garrison, who's doing really well on the ground. Actually, I don't think that was Garrison. I saw three, which would mean that was Bailey who ran it. Smith hits and open McCarty for eight. And now they're moving again, and Geno Smith starting to get in that rhythm. The Big East co-champions. Down goes Garrison. Third and five. This is the opportunity for Florida State. Come up with the stop. Save your season. It is on the line on this play. And off to Garrison. First down. Oh, man. You see the reaction on the field. And if you didn't, rewind it. By number four, Terrence Parks. Keep your eye on number four. He came up with two interceptions against Boise State last week. He put his hands up on his face. Kind of like an, oh my gosh, our season might just be over by allowing that run to happen. West Virginia, they're going to play clock game right now. Garrison hurdles and he fumbled it. Oh my goodness. That could have been huge for Florida State. Garrison with the hurdle. And did he get hit by his own? No, he didn't. He got, It was fumbled by number four by Cooks. The man who was showing, or by Parks. The man who was showing the frustration and... Don Barclay, Don Barclay with the fumble recovery, so go send him, if you're a Mountaineers fan, send him a thank you note or something, or find him on campus next semester and say thank you for saving our season after Garrison tried to hurdle. Terrence Parks coming up with the fumble, and Terrence Parks coming up with the tackle. We told you, go back to that play where Parks put his hands to his face, and you saw the frustration let out. Field goal is good. The field goal, or the frustration by Parks. After that, Parks played like a man possessed, forced a fumble, and forced a stop on third and one. So with two minutes to go, Florida State, they need to score three times. It is a 17-point ball game here in the Outback. And still more amazed right now at this West Virginia defense. Allowing three points in seven and a half quarters of action. Manuel takes off, slides down just shy of the first down. So that keeps the clock rolling. And you're going to, wow, you're going to spike it? That takes you, well... I guess takes you to a third down one. Look at that one for eight on the third down conversions. I'm telling you, that's been that's been the struggle for Florida State here today is they have not been able to convert on their third downs. And now you throw it on third and one. You spike it on second and one. Throw it on third and one. I am not sure about this play calling at all. So now it's fourth and one. Another failed third down conversion, one for nine for Florida State. EJ, out of the gun, he's it to Freeman. I like that call, the halfback slip screen. That's a really safe call to pick up the first. Look at the center, he's doing it again. Watch his hand, whoa! It's witchcraft or something. This is eerie, eerie stuff. But it's not helping the Seminoles win right now. Because they're trailing by 17. 
with a minute 29 to go against the West Virginia team that has not allowed a touchdown in seven and a half quarters of action. Manuel down, thrown to the ground. Sack for the fourth time today. Brought to you by Spark. Third and 12. Third downs have been an adventure for this team, let alone a third and long. EJ throws it short. They're going to convert. And they get out of bounds to stop the clock. They are able to convert, and it was uh, Rodney Smith with the catch, the junior from Miami, and he was hoping to go home to the Orange Bowl. It's not going to happen unless they can pull off 17 points in a minute of play, which would mean a lot of successful onside kicks and a lot of successful drives against this powerful West Virginia defense. That's sack number five. Under a minute to go now with just one timeout, and they spike it to take him to another third and long. Third down and 17, and the clock might be striking close to midnight on Florida State Cinderella run. Manual. Incomplete. Let his receiver stray out of bounds. Fourth and 17. This is it for the Seminoles. The season is on the line. A 20-point unanswered comeback for West Virginia. And they're going to do it again. They hold. And the Mountaineers, they're smelling the oranges. They will be going to the Discover Orange Bowl to do battle with the Alabama Crimson Tide. They allowed zero points offensively last week. They allowed three points offensively this week and the West Virginia Mountaineers defense has done it again my oh my Geno Smith West Virginia rolling along Harrison Garrison will run in that will do it the West Virginia Mountaineers are going to the Elite Eight. Who, see, who says the Big East can't play football? Well, West Virginia, they're involved in the lawsuit trying to get to the Big 12 right now. But they're doing their conference proud at the moment. And they will have the Alabama Crimson Tide in the Orange Bowl. Let's take a look at your play of the game without a doubt. Staying in bounds. Look at the feet. For the score. So we already know two of our Elite Eight games. LSU versus Texas in the Cotton Bowl. And we know West Virginia versus Alabama in the Orange Bowl. Oregon, they're going to the Rose Bowl and McCarty, definitely your player of the game. Oregon, they're heading to the Rose Bowl. Winner of Bedlam Part 2. We'll be headed to the Fiesta Bowl. We're, all start, we're starting to fill it in. These are some great games we got coming up for the Elite Eight. Here's your highlights. I mean, defensively, it was what was expected here in the Outback. But Geno Smith, once he got in rhythm, I mean, that was it. <laughs> you take a look, FSU defense, or West Virginia defense, doing things like that all day. I'm excited to see what they're going to do against Alabama, this defense. The game-winning play, McCarty, the feet work again, just so impressive for the score. Some final snapshots, and we'll get the post-game show rolling, and we'll move you on to your next game. Geno Smith, again, great day for him. 
EJ Manuel, not so much. Didn't throw any picks, but just couldn't get anything going for rushing. You see the numbers in Garrison. 20 attempts, 75 yards. He played well for West Virginia when you have all sides of your team playing well. Good things happen. McCarty. Four catches, 93 yards, two touchdowns. And for Florida State, they spread the ball around about 20 yards apiece for everyone, but that's it. Defensive-wise, how about Parks? Kind of the leader of this defense. Ten tackles, and he came up with some big plays late, but two interceptions against Boise and couldn't come up with anything here. And there you see the numbers on the West Virginia side. For team stats, comparisons, first down, West Virginia. And for Florida State, when you look at third down comparisons, we'll get there. That's a big part of the reason they didn't win. They couldn't get first downs. They couldn't convert on third downs. Total offense, West Virginia, 293. And another big comeback. They were trailing, or I didn't say big comeback, but trailing Wisconsin by 21, thanks to the, the uh, Wisconsin defense and special teams. They, they rallied to get 24 unanswered, and then here, rally to get 20 unanswered. I cannot wait for West Virginia, Alabama. Passing yards, 200 is 87. There's your third down conversions. Two for 11. You will lose every time if you cannot convert on third downs. They had more turnovers, but they were able to overcome that. Total yards. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get you let's hit you with some brackets and get you a preview for Alabama, West Virginia. It's the Discover Orange Bowl next week. And West Virginia with wins over Wisconsin and Florida State, they find themselves in the Elite 8 at number 23. They will be going up against a team that is 20 one seeds higher than them in the Alabama Crimson Tide. Who wants it more? It's the Orange Bowl, and that's next Saturday at 8.